ओम श्री साई राम आई ऑफर माई मोस्ट हम्बल प्रणाम सर भगवान स्लोट स्वीट डियर एस स्वामी मोस्ट रिवियर एल्डर्स डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स बिफोर आई प्रोसीड ऑन आई वुड लाइक टू जस्ट मेक अ स्मॉल करेक्शन इन द इंट्रोडक्शन माई नॉलेज इन म्यूजिक इज वेरी पुअर एंड आई एम ऑफन मिस्टेकन फॉर अश्वथ नारायण हु लुक सिमिलर टू मी मेनी टाइम्स इन प्रशांत इंडियम पीपल कम एंड टेल brother you sang very well <laughs> and then i look at them if i'm going to meet them again in my life i tell them no no it's actually ashwath if it's going to be just a one time meeting i tell it's all swami's grace and leave it at that <laughs> so well um, the greatest the most wonderful the best thing that has ever happened to me in my life and i don't think anything better than this can happen to anybody else in any other life is to get to know the living god when he is having his sojourn on the earth and that was the privilege that many of us have enjoyed that i too enjoyed and how it happened is a beautiful story in itself well i do not have a you know low and behold experience because of which i became a devotee in that sense i often say that i have been a free devotee for swami you know people usually say swami if you're god you you cure cancer if you're god you do this swami if you're god you do that and and swami does that and there oh my god i didn't put any challenges like that so that's why i say i'm a free devotee how i became a devotee is i used to see a picture of swami at home i used to ask my father who is this who is this and for some reason my father did not tell me the actual truth he would always say that he's the person who did my thread ceremony so i thought swami was some priest he does thread ceremonies and yeah conducts weddings and other things that immediately sprang the next question in my head as to dad if you're keeping the photo of the priest who performed your thread ceremony what about the priest who performed your marriage what about the priest who performed my naming ceremony where are their pictures and when i asked this question that is when after some time he said listen do you want to know who he is yes i want to know he is god and i accepted free devotee but then but then began a journey which is simply so memorable and if people ask me to speak on what swami means to me i just don't know i feel the best way would be just to stand and shed tears because maybe the eyes come the closest in speaking about what swami means words will never suffice but i always keep making this foolish attempt because it is so joyful for me and that is why i am sharing the first time well it's a long story of how i got into the higher secondary school at prashant nilayam much before that i studied at shri shailam swami school in kerala i will not go into that story i will start the story because my topic is experiences as a student so i will start right away from the hostel when i joined once i joined the hostel it was simply beautiful it felt so wonderful i didn't feel homesick i didn't feel anything because i had already been in a hostel before that i used to always remember you know my mother had told me that you now once you join here your mother your father your friend your everybody is going to be swami so anything you want to tell any of these people your mother your father your aunt your uncle your friends you tell it to swami so that was what i started off with and every room in our hostel had one picture of swami and i used to talk to swami knowing that he is listening well he gave me proof also later that he is listening but as of now i started off with faith and i used to keep speaking there used to be a practice in the hostel every night they give us sheets on which you can do likita nama japa you can write down the name of your most favorite deity so om shri sai ram or Jesus be praised or Allah Hu Akbar anything you do every night likhita japam and i used to feel that you know the purpose of my life is to attain swami and you know my concept of swami's hostel was so different from reality i mean i imagined you know there'll be people who will be just levitating floating around in the air because you know they are all the rishis they are all the sages they are all the great people who have done great punyam and have come to swami well only the physical exhibition of this was not true but really in 
whatever I have seen, really phenomenal people stay. People who are great spiritual giants, though they don't levitate. I've really come across so many such people. But in the beginning, my concept was like that. And I thought, how will I ever fit in over there? I'm a normal guy. I have no superpowers. I have no halo around my head. I don't do anything. But then I saw that all the students were like me. So I felt it's fine. And I thought that I must get very close to Swami. I must get very close to Swami. And therefore, every night my Likita Japam would be, I love you, Swami. I love you, Swami. I love you, Swami. And this is what I used to write. And at the end of the month, we were told that all the Likita Japam that we have done, we should submit it because, you know, it's the practice whenever a new building is coming up or some new uh, construction is being made, they uh, put it under the ground that it is like this building stands on the name of the Lord. That is the spirit. So that is why we are supposed to submit it. And I suddenly felt, how will I submit mine? You know, in the middle, there's some I love you, I love you, I love you. It's all, it's not the Lord's name as such. I have written, I love you, Swami, I love you, Swami. So I thought, I will not submit what I have written. Let me keep it with me only. I kept it with me. And then, you know, I heard some of my uh, members, other boys in the rooms talking and saying, you know, this they're going to offer it to Swami. Wow, we didn't imagine what a privilege it is. When I heard that, I thought, oh my God, you know, only my, whatever, my uh, sadhana or my Likita Japam is not going to be offered to Swami. Everybody else is going to be offered to Swami. So I made a plan. I thought, if they don't offer it, I will offer it as a letter. You know, I'll fold it in at least one of the sheets. I will offer it to Swami. And I prayed and said, Swami, with all my love, with all my heart, I'm offering this to you because, you know, my mom has told me that you're my mother, father, you're my everything. So I'm offering my love to you. Please accept it. Tomorrow itself, you know, it shows that how much importance I am giving you, Swami, you should also give that much importance, you know, please. Tomorrow itself, I wanted to take it. Otherwise, I'll think that, you know, someday you happen to pass by me, so you picked it. Tomorrow, if you take, I'll feel that really, you know, you're taking it with purpose, you know, that that is the way the childish mind thinks. And I went to the mandir, I was sitting, I was sitting actually in the middle of a group of students, not near any of the edges. So darshan rounds, when Swami came for the darshan rounds, there was no way I could reach out to him. After darshan, before the bhajan, Swami walks out and he comes nearby. And I'm thinking, Swami, you have come. I don't know how you're going to take it, but you have to take it before the aarti concludes and you leave. Because Swami, please, this means a lot to me. You must take it. You must take it. There's my prayer going on. And Swami suddenly, you know, he's gently swaying, so sweetly looking everywhere. Suddenly he just, with his two fingers, he tells the two boys there like this. And that is a universal symbol, universal language to make a path. And a path is made. And as soon as the path is made, I'm right in the first line along the path. And I'm so thrilled. And in that one moment, you know, pride, ego are such, such, they are like such beasts of prey. They'll be just waiting to bounce on you. In a moment, I felt, oh my God, I'm like some Prahlada or Dhruva. They prayed for years and years and the Lord made an appearance. In one day, see this? This path is being made for me only. <laughs> really, I was so thrilled. You know, at that time I felt I'm just feeling happy. But that's how it is, you know, ego and pride. They come into us, disguising themselves, camouflaging themselves as happiness, as, you know, as selflessness. They camouflage. We have to be very, very alert. Well, I may not have been alert, but Swami is very alert. He walks in, I offer the letter. I mean this, I love you, I love you, Swami, I love you, Swami. He picks it and I'm so thrilled. And I just bend down to touch his feet. And Swami is walking away. As he's walking away, a paper falls down. Yes, that's it. I pick it and oh, and before I can offer it back again, Swami has already turned his back and he's walking away. Immediately came back to ground earth. Oh God, Swami, what, what an egoistic fool I am, Swami. I am the worst kind of fellow, Swami. What is this, Swami? The small things also I don't know. Immediately, you know, the other end now. First, I am Dhruva. Now, I am the worst creature, Swami. I am self-condemnation. That is also equally bad. But, you know, that's how, that is how I have learned. Immediately, I was Swami, Swami. Then, Swami, please, sorry, Swami, please. But please don't, for this sake, don't reject my love, Swami. And as I say this, Swami starts waving his hand, he's materializing vibhuti for a devotee. And those days, anybody who had a white handkerchief, 
could rush to Swami, offer it to Swami for him to wipe his hand. And I got this opportunity, so I had a kerchief in my pocket. I rushed to him, I gave the kerchief. He takes the kerchief, wipes his hand, throws it back. And he doesn't, not yet thrown it back. I'm waiting for him to throw it back. He looks at me, gives a smile, then throws the handkerchief. And I'm neatly now folding it and keeping it in my pocket. Again, see, small, small instances where our foolishness comes out. So I'm standing there, instead of enjoying that beautiful form, I'm now old. <laughs> that vibhuti, that vibhuti has come from Swami. But no, we treasure, we treasure Swami's gifts more than Swami. That is a question that Swami asks us. Do you come for me or do you come for the wonders of my hand? We say we come for you Swami, but the minute we see the wonders of his hand, we forget Swami and wow, oh, Swami, what a ring Swami. <laughs> this is not what Swami gave physically, but wow, Swami. Swami is still sitting here. So I was lost in that handkerchief and as I'm seeing that, there's a pat on my shoulder. And I look up, Swami, oh, Swami is still here. And now Swami is pointing with his finger to the piece of paper in my pocket. Just give that. And I was bold. You know, Swami is God not because he cures, not only because he cures cancers or he builds projects which uplift millions of people. He is God because he does those little, little things, little, little things which, which mean the world to us. You know, if I tell somebody that I was convinced that my Swami loves me like anything because he pointed out to a piece of paper in my pocket and took it. People tell what's so great in that. Yeah, you will never understand. But that's enough for me. And that is why people flock to Swami. Because if we ask ourselves, none of us might have had such grand miracles. But yet, he has touched us in ways which we just cannot imagine. And then, you know, one by one, such small instances kept happening. I remember an instance where I was studying, it is in my 12th standard, the board exams are coming, I'm studying for my uh, biology examination. And as I'm studying, I'm seeing some of the boys, you know, idle mind, you get a little bored of studies, all your creative juices come out exactly during the examination time. You feel like pursuing a game, you feel like pursuing your hobby, examination time only. Because somehow it's like that. So all of them got bored of studying and they started playing on the lawns. How they were playing was, there was a water pipe that was left for watering the plants. They picked it up and started hosing each other, you know, playing with water. And I got tempted, I also joined them. After 15 minutes, I felt, oh my God, I'm not studying, let me go back to studies. At this point, I'll just take a pause and do a quick flashback of what had happened till now in the mandir. One day when I was sitting in the mandir and I got up to give a letter to Swami, Swami said, hey, this boy, put him in mental hospital. I felt so happy. Who cares what Swami said, as long as Swami said about me. You know, they say that once a boy comes running to his father and says, Father, the king spoke to me, king spoke to me, father, the king spoke to me. So the father summons everybody in the village, come, come, the king has spoken to my son. What did he say? You know, when he was going on the chariot in the road, I was standing in the middle. He shouted out and said, you fool, get out of my way or else you'll get hurt. So, you know, when the king speaks, it doesn't matter what he spoke. He spoke. In the same way, it doesn't matter what Swami said. I felt so thrilled. Wow. First time Swami is speaking to me and Swami said that I should be admitted in the mental hospital. I felt very happy. The next day, I was sitting in the second line or third line somewhere a little behind and I was trying to give a letter. Again, you know, Swami didn't take my letter. Again, he looks at me and says, Hey, this boy is still here. He's supposed to be in the mental hospital. And Swami walks. I felt wow. First line, if Swami sees you, it's okay. Third line he's seeing you means, wow, there is some, you know, I mean, that, that magnetism is there. It's ranging up to three meters. From three meters, Swami is able to see me and I tried it out also. Fifth line, sixth line, almost up to seven meters range I had where Swami would see and tell, hey, mental hospital. So this was the background and I was very happy. I didn't understand why or what. It's just that I had a little fear, you know, because I remember once there was one of my classmates he wanted to ask Swami something and he was desperate and every day Swami would be ignoring him. And one day he got up, Swami said, Kucho, ikada kucho, means sit here, sit here. He sat, Aarti got over, Swami had left. He refused to get up. He said, Swami has told me to sit here, I'll sit here. He was forcefully, 
I mean, you know, one teacher came and told him, don't be foolish, just get up, let's go back. So there were, there were some people who would strictly take like that. So I was fearing that, Swami, when you tell, admit him into mental hospital, don't tell it to one fellow like this, who will really think that I should be admitted to the mental hospital. So that was my fear. In the meanwhile, yes, now come back. We are hosing each other with water. And I go back, I try to study again. Again, I'm distracted. I come and again play, again I go back. This happens two, three times. And I tell myself, at this rate, I'm never going to finish my studies. So I say, Swami, I promise you that till I finish this chapter, I will not have lunch. Now, timings are very, very strictly adhered to in Swami's hostels. You go 10 minutes late for lunch, you'll be told that you're three hours early for dinner. So, which means I had a limit, I had the limit and food is, I love, I love food. So, <laughs> I was just thinking that this will, this promise to Swami and my love for food will ensure that I finish this chapter before I, before um, the time. But again, I went to play, I came back and then I could hear the bell ringing. I thought, oh no, oh my God, what do I do now? Lunch counter is open only for 20 minutes, I can't. And then immediately those two figures pop up, one on the right shoulder, one on the left shoulder, one with wings and a halo, other with a tail and the horn. And the wings with halo says, come on, try to read, finish fast. And the one with the horn says, hey, listen, you just told Swami I will read the chapter. You didn't tell him you will study the chapter. Just read through fast. Ten minutes you can be done, go have lunch. I said, yeah, correct. Correct, correct. So, and the angel was trying to say, I think, you know, stick to the spirit of what you said, not the word, and all, but that was unheard. Just poof, went off and quickly read through, went, had a nice lunch. That evening I was sitting in the mandir. Swami again comes and I give him a letter again. This time Swami turns to the other boy who is sitting opposite to me. He was a staff member and tells him, hey, this boy, you take him to mental hospital. And I said, ah, nice. It continues. Very happy. Swami walked on. He walks about four steps, stops, turns and tells him. And when you put him in the mental hospital, tell the doctors not to give him food. <laughs> and you know, that is, that was when I understood that you need not speak or write in a letter. Writing a letter is for our satisfaction, our joy, which we must do. We must write. Once, you know, one of the teachers who had the chance of living with Swami physically asked him. You know, he actually saw Swami reading letters and uh, not reading letters, picking up letters. He just picks it up, throws it in the dustbin. Clean, un unopened, sealed covers. So he just felt, Papam, some devotee, how much difficulty and with how much feelings he or she would have written this letter. Swami is simply dumping them into the dustbin. We do this, you know, oftentimes we think, oh, Swami, Papam, I mean, this child is suffering so much. Please help Swami. We, we make the foolish assumption that our love for the child is greater than Swami's love. So, Swami, please heal that person. Swami, cure this person. We think we are wiser than Swami. We do that also for our prayers. Swami, please, Swami, this, this ticket should get booked, Swami, whatever happens. I know, Swami, you can run the world, you do it, everything perfectly, but this ticket, I think I know better, Swami. So, please, please listen to me. We give advice to Swami. We do this. So, yeah, so when Swami was doing this, he was thinking like that, he was thinking, what is this, Swami doesn't, he's not even reading, with so much effort that devotee might have written. Then Swami just calls him, this has happened many times to many people, picks a letter at random, tells him to open it, and then Swami starts telling him this, he writes like this, like that, and it's exactly matching, and this teacher is stunned, and he says, wow, Swami, fantastic. Then he says, but Swami, then why should we write a letter to you, Swami? Everything you know, simply, you know, their effort also goes waste and you are also spending so much time. You know, that is when Swami said that, see, you get noble thoughts. When you put it into words and then you may do the action of writing, you achieve unity of your thought, word and deed. Vachas, manasekam vachasekam karmanyekam mahatmanam. Which means, when you have unity in thought, word and deed, you become a Mahatma. And Swami says, I want you to achieve that unity in thought, word and deed and that is why I am telling you to write. In fact, in one recent discourse, not recent discourse, recently a uh, discourse that I heard recently, Swami reveals one beautiful 
face it an otherwise unknown aspect we all know the story of dhruva the child who went and sought lord vishnu in that swami gives a twist that i had not read before and it is so beautiful the child dhruva was just 4 year old and is praying to lord narayana the only thing that he is able to speak is om namo bhagavate vasudevaya that is what he is chanting vishnu appears and vishnu says what do you want and the child is just lisping he has come to the forest even before he could speak so narayana touches his cheek with a conch and pra- and dhruva is now able to speak and narayana asks what do you want then dhruva says lord when you knew where to find me in this remote forest in some which corner i am and you know that don't you know what is it that i seek so why are you asking me what i want this is what swami has said it's not recorded in the scriptures swami said that vishnu told him of course this is authentic this is, this is a direct account the saints or sages who wrote might have missed it out but narayana himself is revealing what he actually told dhruva swami said narayana says dhruva till now you have longed for me and you have done this tapas in order to achieve me now state it in words state it in words because then you will have unity in what you longed for what you did and what you spoke and then you become a mahatma i want to make you a mahatma therefore i am asking you what do you want and that is why swami used to ask us what's your name there used to be you know swami used to uh, scold some of his students saying jhuta vedanta you know swami lasta primary school boy where did you come from swami from your lotus feet good boy same thing comes to the institute side where did you come from uh, then he knows that guy has given the answer right and swami liked it so swami from your lotus feet swami i had tried it once where did you come from swami your lotus feet shut up where did you come from swami bombay that's all that is peripheral lip service so you know this this kind of i don't know i get dragged into this so coming back to the letters so that is the reason swami says you should write letters it is not for him to know he is omnipresent and that was how in school i got to know that swami knows everything well and then another another uh, interesting episode yeah i'll go through quickly uh, my ego ego is a you know ego is wrongly understood as pride pride is one of the ways ego exhibits itself ego means anything we attach to the body even telling that i am useless i am good for nothing that's also ego any thought that makes us feel that we are separate from the lord is ego to so how can you when you say that you are useless that means you are condemning the lord which is ego if you feel that i am great i am fantastic you are forgetting that you are one with the lord whom are you praising to again that's ego so ego is both sides and one beautiful lesson in ego that i learned was one day during darshan swami had called a huge group of devotees from some district in andhra pradesh into the bhajan hall for an interview after the interview the group leader he walks out he comes straight to me i was in my 12th grade he tells me swami has told that you should take group photo so i said okay and as he went i was wondering now how does swami know me I mean, never had I got a <clears throat> chance to introduce myself, you know. As that's what we think. You no, know? I mean, Swami never asked me what's my name. How does Swami know me? Then I thought, you know, maybe Swami would have told, call a photographer. He saw five of us. Maybe I was the most prominent guy, or maybe he saw my lens, which is the best one. So he came and thought, better to take this guy. Photo will come good. So I thought, okay, fine. Then I. But those were the film camera days. I had just three frames remaining, and I thought, now if I take their group pictures, how will I shoot Swami's picture? and anyway okay i'll just go take one picture and come i got up and started walking their group had assembled in kulwant hall as i'm walking there suddenly there's a hush in the hall i wondered what happened and everybody is fully silent i was like oh my god swami must have told because otherwise why will they give me so much respect you know so i also and then i saw that they were not looking at me actually they're looking behind me and i turn and there is swami again you know another lesson all the love and respect that we get in the world is because swami is standing there you know swami says in the ramayana coronation scene you see there are monkeys standing next to a rama and people salute 
it would be foolish if the monkey thinks that oh look at the humans are saluting me the drama just get up from the throne and walk out nobody will even look at the face of the monkey they see swami through us or see swami in us that we should not forget and then i realized that and and then i realized that swami is going to pose with them for a group photograph oh my god oh group photograph with swami wow fantastic so i took a picture and i sat down because this was my farthest foray into the devotee side otherwise you know swami would very shun upon indiscipline in fact there's another episode maybe if i have time i'll tell in which narthimurthy sir had a very important role in which because of my indiscipline i got into real deep trouble but that was the kind so i was really fearful swami when he's walking he asks are you student i say yes swami go to lady side and swami continues to walk and what is he pulling my leg so but but if he's not pulling my leg so i just got up and started walking behind swami those days nobody used to walk behind swami so again it was a very you know audacious thing swami is walking in darshan line collecting letters and behind i am walking with my camera swami turns and says go to lady side i said swami go go so i did not know what to do so i went and stood near the interview room door in puttaparthi with the camera swami completes walking the gent side and he is now walking to the lady side he just glances at the interview room door and sees me lady side he tells again okay fine that is when i saw a group of ladies seated there oh that same group oh then i realized oh maybe oh that the same group maybe swami is going to give a picture with the ladies also okay and it was just like this the whole group is here and there's a narrow path after the path again the ladies are seated so i went and stood there and swami posed he is just 4 feet away from me swami said take and behind him there are 400 ladies who are seated and i saw through my lens i am not able to cover the whole picture so what do i do um behind me are the ladies then you know again the swami is magic with those two fingers he just does this and just like the red sea parted for moses for vasudeva the river yamuna parted the ladies part <laughs> and a path path is generated you know swami says go so i walk i walk in and i walk in and from a wide far distance i take the picture and then after that i start walking i start walking behind swami and swami is going back to the interview room he goes to the interview room door and i am also there he turns around and says gent side over yes swami lady side yes swami then what are you following me for <laughs> swami go okay swami so i went back to my place and i was in cloud 9 but wow what see that and i went back to the hostel the teachers you know they took the negatives from me developed it so thoughtful of them they printed one picture counted the number of people in that picture made that many copies they spent for it and they told me also if swami asked who spent you say swami it is your money only you tell that you have not spent because you have not spent all that coaching they gave and you know all that when it was told to me i felt wow this is this is great yeah. in fact i went to my room and said you know today evening i am going to give pictures to swami oh they said very nice and you want to give your letter you sit next to me because you know swami will anyway come near me see how how quickly in the guise of joy how with his pride and his self uh, self gratification comes in so i was telling all this and i went and sat i remember sitting in the central block swami is coming for darshan and i am holding all the uh, the packet with all the pictures inside it waiting for swami to come and as swami comes close i'm trying to just show it to him i'm not raising on my knees why let let swami come it feels nice no otherwise it look like i got up so swami came swami has swami will definitely come and i'm seeing right opposite to me that person who had called me to take the group photograph he's also sitting there so that this is perfect take from me give it to him wow swami turns walks straight to him speaks to him he is also trying to point out that swami our photos are there swami just ignores and walks off and this guy next to me calls me and says hey you told next to me in letter i didn't get darshan also for our <laughs> like then the guy this side also calls saram brother saram you know saram no is a word that expresses everything from hope to faith to disgust saram 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 
that was there sai ram everything so when this brother tapped me and said saram brother means what you told what happened so that was the sai ram that i got so i received two three different different sai rams from people around i wanted to hide my face somewhere so i got up and went to the portico of the mandir you know in the portico of the mandir where later on swami's car used to be parked that there also around 30 students could sit and that's a gamble you know because you sit there you will not get a good darshan but if in case swami chooses to come that way then you get a very close darshan and if on that day swami decides to speak to the vip portico was just there so if swami decides to speak to some vip that day then it's fantastic you get close darshan for long so it's like a um, high return high risk investment but i felt okay swami will not be coming there i'll go there and hide my face i can hide from everybody else i was sitting there and from the top to the bottom again now i am such a useless fellow i'm so bad went off into the other other exhibition of ego which is self condemnation as i'm doing this swami comes walking out of the interview room door he starts speaking to the prashantinilam campus warden hostel or he is asking he is speaking about the and i'm just sitting there putting my head down and he's speaking about discipline he's speaking i thought somewhere maybe he'll he'll tell that you know students also are very egoistic and then immediately i thought i told myself ah oh, see your ego you are thinking that you are so important that swami has to talk about you to the warden i said oh i'll never learn i'll never learn and i was so silent and i just turned around and kept the cover that cover made a slight crackling sound swami immediately turned i got scared i said what is that swami cover what's in the cover some from the photo swami which photos i thought this is some uh, you know it's been interrogation like that I said swami swami your photos only swami means not some other photos your photos only swami yesterday oh yesterday why you didn't tell me swami you see how swami you know with swami once the message is learned the messenger ceases Swami has no emotions like us. He doesn't get angry on somebody and for ten days take to cool down or nothing. If he gets angry, it's for conveying a message. The faster you learn the message, the faster his anger goes. Everything that God does is with a message, and once the message is learned, the messenger goes away. That is how it is in our lives also. When any problem comes, difficulty comes, anything comes, it's always a messenger with a message. Instead of crying and fuming and getting frustrated. if we look for the message and learn the message the messenger will just stop the messenger just ceases to exist minute i had felt that i had been egoistic and i had been so stupid and i should not be like that so i asked me what is there in the cover and then so sweetly it is oh why didn't you tell me give i felt so happy i felt on big burden lifted off okay at least you know because of my ego the devotees there will not suffer because they are getting their pictures So he gave the pictures to Swami, and Swami is walking out. He stands, he turns, come. He calls me, Swami. Wow! I get up, and there the whole Kulvant Hall is seated in the Ganesh on the dais in the Ganesh portico, on the dais in front of everybody. Swami calls, and I'm standing next to him, holding my hand. Swami is standing with the photos. He just looks. That person is already jumping up, like that. And Swami says, "Come." He comes running. He comes running. and swami says okay what is this swami this is gents group photo this is gents group photo okay mm. and what is this swami this is ladies group photo this is ladies group photo take now that person maybe for future he is thinking he just says swami can i have the negatives also swami now you know swami look a little taken aback oh negatives swami i have swami i said and i gave the negatives swami said so our boys always perfect everything they do perfectly I felt so redeemed, and Swami gave the negatives, and Swami patted me on the back and said, "Take Parnamskar." <coughs> so I took Parnamskar. Swami had sent him off by then, and then I got up and said, "Swami, you know by your grace, I know you go and sit." Swami, yes. You learned. I have told you. I taught you. I patted you on your back once you have learned. Now, now go back. Extra. Adi, Swami used to call it Adika Prasangi. Don't talk extra now. Enough. You know, it happens like that. 
you tell swami what is this swami you don't listen only swami how many days i have been pining swami you don't listen you seem to have ears for meera bai and for others but i you don't listen to me and the minute swami just turns and smiles oh swami you you are the most compassionate oh swami you are the lord in one discourse swami said like that you know he said if you want a toy from your father what do you go what do you do you go and tell dad give me a toy dad gets you the toy or he says no i won't give you the toy you won't go and say dad you the one who wears a long coat you the one with a shining hair you the one with a long nose please grant me my you don't do why do you come and do like that to swami why do you oh anathanata karuna sindho you don't come to the point come to the point that's why you know even when letters used to be written swami used to tell come to the point don't write long letters swami i offer my most sincere pranams at your lotus feet by your grace everything is going on very well swami life is so smooth everybody is well settled only one problem swami this you solve then everything becomes fine now like, what do you get that introductory paragraph for telling everything is fine come directly to the point right so that was one episode then well i will fast forward like these one or two incidents you know which really taught lessons for life lessons which if adhered to life will become more peaceful more serene that is more important you know i shall fast forward to one episode this uh, episode is very relevant i feel because today we we are grappling with our attempts to see the physical form and since we don't see the physical form we think what do we do now you know many times when i have narrated some instance incidents they say ah you got those chances you can speak but now what do we do this incident happened when i was in brindavan in brindavan actually you know we we had a very very strict lifestyle and as i see your schedule for the sadhana camp it's so perfect because the same words were there in our schedule also 10 o'clock lights off shut lights off and we had to sleep and uh, and we used to feel what is this why we can study better at night i am i'm a night night guy you know they don't understand i'm not a morning guy i can't get up for supravasa it's tough but night i can go on till 12 but you know i have realized that studying from 10 to 12 at night is only like half an hour of studies two hours because there's so much of goes in lethargy sloth because even biologically the body at that time is preparing for shutdown digesting of the food supplying there's no blood supply to the brain sufficiently so half an hour in the morning is more effective than two hours at night so some of these nights you know i used to somehow we used to light candle and try to study and more often than not more than the studies the talking would develop and you know i have i had a weakness of getting attached and i had so many you know attachments very close you know swami used to always say have friendship only with god don't have friends that's why swami used to, that is why swami encourages brothers and sisters he would not like to say that friends he will not like you addressing in the assembly like that revered elders and my dear friends what friends i am your only friend no plural brothers and sisters swami has corrected it so many times god is your only friend and so what happened is because of this i i developed you know this is another thing that very often happens in teenage you know you feel that ah my parents they are some bygone generation they won't understand me and whom do i so my best group is my friends they understand me the best and so you start having a new kind of family itself with friends and you feel they are much better and you know what swami says is very true about worldly friends they say the beauty of friendship is that it has no obligation it's meant based purely on no expectation no obligation but worldly friendship is purely obligation and expectation it is misused they say that i'm a friend i need not help you when you need because i am not your husband i am not your wife i am not your brother i am not your sister i'm just a friend so if i just say i'm sorry you're supposed to understand that is a kind of worldly friend but anyway i had these friendships because of which i had many heartburns two boring satsangs will happen if i start talking about those heartburns but basically i was saying swami now i realize but what i have got into this swami please get me out of this please get me out of this see the whole day swami has made in the hostel in such a manner that the mind and body are always kept busy and here i am finding some free time in that also to get caught in the mud of the world one swami had said if every student just adheres to the hostel discipline it's enough you need not do any special sadhana 
it felt so easy but that is how it is the schedule that you have for today and tomorrow try to adhere it to it throughout your life that's enough for you to get your moksha get your fulfillment but you will see how tough it is because this is a thing in which the mind and body is kept constantly on board so when i was finding this difficult that was a time for sports meet we had gone to puttaparthi i was supposed to receive a shield from swami as a captain um as a vice captain but my interest was in that letter that i had written asking swami to free me of these friendships and get me in touch with him i said swami you i don't get to speak with you i'm not i don't dine with you i don't talk to you but i want you as my best friend is it possible can you pull me away from these friendships and i wanted to give that one letter which i could not i received the shield and i tried to give the letter swami didn't take the letter i came back i was feeling bad people around me didn't understand why i'm feeling sad they said you went you posed with swami you got a picture what is it that you're feeling sad about i was feeling sad i couldn't give this letter and i remember that night uh, i mean after that trip when we came back to vrindavan i thought oh my god now this thing will start again again you know because now you suddenly can't tell you know all of you you just shut up don't talk to me i don't want to associate with you you can't cut away like that it becomes so tough and you know you would be called as a person suffering from aids aids mean today's world aids day it's not that aids aids used to stand for acquiring intense devotion suddenly swami comes and pats on your cheek and you come back somebody says hey what happened in the match sai ram and he got aids here suddenly became devoted we'll see after 3 days let swami not talk he'll become fine so i could not simply tell don't speak to me and although i was suffering we have returned to brindavan and i'm i'm you know i know that when night comes again i will start chatting and you know because 9:30 study hours get over we have a time where we are shown the news and we get milk that is the time you start chatting and mingling with everybody and talking and so i was thinking i will not go only for the news so that night i did not go and somebody comes to me and says arvind warden sir is calling you oh okay i go there and narsimurthy sir tells me see arvind swami has picked up a few students to do security duty in trai brindavan which means you know what you have to go to swami's residence at night and sleep there come back only next day morning so swami has picked you pick up your bedding and go to trai brindavan i just did not know what to say i was in tears i said swami i said please save me and you have invited me right rally into your house what it is swami's love is such he said if you need me you deserve me that's all as simple as that just that after your need is fulfilled don't forget me because the time will come when you'll need me again i'm telling you not to forget me not because i want you i'm telling you not to forget me because you'll need me again i'll be there for you and that was that was a revelation for me all i need to do is need swami and find for him i need not worry how he'll come to me he will come to me he will come to me somehow or the other and then you know came the next phase that though i was sleeping in trai brindavan let me say that for the whole one and a half years not for once did i ever see swami physically in trai brindavan because we would enter after swami has retired and we would come out before swami comes out so never never had i seen him there so but still every night you know i would lie down look up and say swami you know this floor separates if i have x-ray vision actually i can see you sleeping there i should imagine like that and i should tell swami i will imagine that you are not sleeping there you are sleeping beside me here and i would hold my own hand you know i would hold my own hand and say swami i'm holding your hand i'm holding your hand and with my right hand i'll feel as if like i'm holding somebody's hand i'm feeling i would press you know unconsciously oh, what is this this is prayer and when we pray we actually hold swami's hand that is how it is i did not know then i used to imagine like that holding swami's hand because many times in our life we feel it will be nice if only we have somebody to hold our hand let us hold our own hand that's called prayer and that support will never go because our hands are always with us and i used to talk to swami and you know let me tell one thing i used to im- make an imaginary talk with swami it is not a vision it is nothing imaginary i will imagine swami sitting and tell him whatever i want 
and i had noticed that every time swami spoke to me swami spoke to me in telugu because of which in my imaginary conversation i would attempt to speak to him in telugu and let me say that by this habit i have picked up telugu i can speak telugu so though it is imagination it is very 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 useful and i'll translate the telugu for your benefit how i used to speak anything swami today in class this happened swami i am getting so irritated and i will imagine swami's response you know i know staying with swami and reading his teachings i know swami will not say if i say swami in class that guy is irritating me swami swami will not tell yeah yeah, yeah go punch him on the face i know swami will not say that what swami will say bangaru that is just like a test keep calm keep a smile he will become better with you i know this is what swami will say so i will imagine him telling that to me and swami easy for you to tell swami smile but so tough you know it is and swami will tell you know the kind of people who come for my darshan have you seen me every time i smile at everybody and i can do it can you try one one day you try okay swami for your sake i'll try so like this you know this is a conversation i used to build and then came this incident with this i will conclude which which really shines light on what we can do in our lives one day you know i had written a letter to swami and while writing the letter i got this doubt you know what every night i am wasting one hour in this hallucination and imagination closing my eyes and telling swami come swami i am speaking to you and i am this imagination why are you wasting time in this this is what my mind was telling me so that night again i am sleeping there and i am telling swami i have one request and those were the days for some reason for almost 3 weeks swami had not taken a single letter from any of the students he'll take pick letters from the devotees but in brindavan the first two blocks are for the students from there he has not taken any letters at all so i tell him swami i have written a letter i want you to read it and again this is completely imagination okay so i am telling you the conversation and swami says give give let me read it no swami not you i want in the morning i want you to take it why what is the difference give it to me right away i will read it right away no swami how do i know you are true are i am standing here speaking to you you don't you think i am not true oh i don't know swami to prove it that you are true tomorrow take letters from me in the ramesh hall but listen my child i cannot explain the reason but i am not taking letters from any student from last two weeks you know that no i know that that's why i am telling you take from me tomorrow i will take but you know if i take only from you the other seeing you will feel jealous of you and when they feel jealous it's not good for them it's not good for you also that's why swami don't make excuses tell me what to do swami take my letter so that nobody finds out that you have taken my letter and i promise i will not tell anybody that you took my letter so nobody will know and feel jealous and i will also not get affected but i'll also feel happy that you are really true he says oh my god you are doubting me yeah swami you prove once then i'll not doubt you swami says okay we'll see now you sleep no no we'll see you know swami should tell chustam chustam we will see no we'll see swami promise me you sleep now okay but if you don't take swami i'll stop talking and i'll know that i have been a fool all these days this is what was my conversation next day morning i am sitting there usually when we go for darshan we try to sit along the central path because that is where swami comes i i go and sit in one corner because i am thinking nobody less people see me it's better because swami should come and take right and swami comes he comes in that path and i am thinking oh god good he's coming and as he's coming closer my heart is beating faster and swami and i'm holding the letter swami comes close and my heart i feel others can hear it beating and it's so thudding so loudly and swami just walks just passed and i thought what what foolish i thought i really thought all that is true this is what i'm thinking i really thought all that is true <clears throat> and i'm starting to feel bad but swami is stopped there he has stopped there and he is talking to one of the devotees speaking at length that person is kneeling and swami is speaking so i am looking and you know when swami is nearby everybody is looking at swami's face trying to study every minute muscle on that beautiful charming face and as everybody is doing that i am not feeling like looking at his face because that face is now causing me sorrow 
ಪ್ರತಿ ಓ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನೇಷನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ನೈಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಯು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಯು ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾವು ನಾವು ಹೌ ಡೂ ಐ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಹೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐಮ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಆಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐಮ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಸಮ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೂಡ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವೇ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹಸ್ ಟೈಡ್ ಬೋತ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಸೀ ದಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಸೀ ದೇರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಫಿಂಗರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಡೆಕ್ಸ್ ಫಿಂಗರ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ವಿಚಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ 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 ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಫಾರ್ ಮೈ ಲೆಟರ್ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಅಗೇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೈ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಪಿಕ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ಲೆಟರ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಇನ್ ಡೌಟ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಟೂ ಫಿಂಗರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ಡಾಮಿ ಫೇಸ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಲೈ ದಟ್ ದ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಹಿ ಟೇಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಡಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಲೈಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಕಾರ್ಪಿಯನ್ ಅಸ್ ಟಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಮೀ ವಂಡ್ರಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆಪನ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಸಡನ್ಲಿ ಮೈ ಫೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಸಿ ದಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಸಿ ದಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಅಲ್ಲ ದಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಓಕೆ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಮೈ ಗಾಡ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಯು ಡಿಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಯು ಡಿಡ್ ಇಟ್ ನೌ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಯು ಡಿಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಯು ಡಿಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಐಮ್ ಬಬ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಬಟ್ ಐಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಮೇಡ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ that you know many times we may not be able to see swami but swami is able to see us every moment we may not be able to hear swami he is able to hear us every moment i tell you try it out try it out in your lives close your eyes and tell swami i am speaking to you i may not hear you swami and because i am not able to hear you i'll make up your conversation based on what you will say and how do you know based on what swami will say for that we have to read swami scriptures we have to read swami's writings to get to know what is swami's passion what is swami's compassion what is swami's love when we read all that we get to know what swami is and on this journey the more you discover you will realize that the less you know and it will be such a joy to get lost in that sea of love bliss compassion and ah swami is swami is so amazing you will start seeing swami everywhere and you can speak and because you are so immersed in swami even what you are imagining swami to speak to you will be right and if you are going wrong trust me swami will stop you swami will stop you he will ensure that you cannot go ahead because that is one of the roles of lord ganesha as swami has said when we call him vigna vinayaka and we call him the lord of obstacles it doesn't mean that ganesha is the lord who will clear all your obstacles swami says that if you are on the wrong path like the elephant that stands you know in bandipur when you are going in a vehicle when an elephant stands on the road you can do nothing you just have to wait for the elephant to go then only you can cross so swami says ganesha does that also if you are on the wrong path he is a person who will block who will put obstacles so ganesha is remover of obstacles if you are on the right path he is a putter of obstacles if you are on the wrong path so when we feel, when we meet with obstacles when we when there are no obstacles in our path what we should do thank you lord ganesha that we do anyway but when we meet with obstacle in the path don't crib and cry that's ganesha in front of you have darshan and enjoy we do oh, what is this why is this happening are ganesha is showing but at the same time he is telling no this is not the way bangaru again it's a messenger the minute the message is learned the messenger leaves so this has been some of some of the experiences i am really grateful to swami for this beautiful opportunity to relive and share those experiences which of which i am the first beneficiary always so i am really grateful to swami for that i thank narsimurthy sir and all the other organizers for giving me this opportunity because every opportunity as i said i am the first listener and i thank you all for this patient listening i hope our love for swami grows stronger every moment by moment because i'